Hey, so I wanted to do a little different video today. Uh, season 2 is coming soon. I'm still working on some of the high chew taste test videos. But I wanted to kind of talk about some of the fun stuff that I gather in Japan and do a little uh, variety show for you. And if there's something that you think is very interesting, please let me know. I can talk about it more in the future. So we'll start off with one of my favorite things. Prizes in UFO crane games. Have you seen this guy before? That's the first prize I ever won. Me too. Took me about 20 attempts, I think, so this one was a little more on the expensive side, but very cool. Lugia, this one's nice and big. This one actually only took like four or five tries. I kind of won it on accident. I was trying to win a Pikachu, and this was in the background, and somehow the clock was, I was going for Pikachu, and it was so far back, it, it caught Lugia and kind of pushed him down, and he rolled right up to like the drop area where the prizes go. Forget Pikachu, this guy's about to get warm. You know, I get him a little closer, an inch him closer, and he's really close, and finally he's kind of stuck, so I had to ask for help from, from an employee. Moved Pikachu out of the way, which turns out was part of the reason he was stuck, and either on the next try, or the try after that, I was able to win it. Vulpix, and the machine right next to the Lugia. This one took two tries, I want to say. I got really lucky on this. I think somebody had walked away from it. If you see a machine that somebody's playing on, and they walk away, sometimes there's a button that you can push that basically locks it down that says, please don't play this machine until somebody gets back. If somebody doesn't do that, keep an eye, see if they come back. And it's kind of common courtesy to wait, I don't know, five, six minutes. But I waited and I kind of looked and I kind of hovered around the machine and nobody came back so I played it and I lucked out because this one was an easy get. All right, this one was super fun to win in the machine right next to the Vulpix at the Sega. I think it was in Akihabara. This one, I think I won in one try. Okay, he was nowhere near the prize deposit area. To my surprise and luck and maybe skill, uh, the claw weaved its way in between here. And when it clawed down and picked up, it totally got stuck like this. So it came over the prize machine deposit and opened up and it didn't drop. <laughs> so I found an employee and I pointed out what happened and obviously they considered it a win, and so they pulled it off, easy get. Well, this was the last prize I won. It took me more tries, I, I didn't set a budget. Remember, if you followed my last video about prizes, set a budget, probably cheaper than if I would've bought it. Not super exciting, but I won it. Not an easy get, but a get. These little Pokemons, Pokemans, Zapdos, Charizard, and Gengar, one, two, or three tries. These are all easy gets. This little doggy. I won two tries. There's this little creature from Final Fantasy XIV. My friend actually won this. Pikachu and Eevee, I got these actually quite a while ago. Pikachu coin purse, Tokyo Olympics mascots. I've had these for a very long time. I also like really winning these Dragon Ball statues. Uh, let me give you a close up. There's a couple of Dragon Ball Z statues that I wasn't going to keep because I my plan is to give away these prizes. But I won these these two prizes with the help of a friend, and they are just so cool. I can't help but keep it. But here's a closer look. I've also won a fair share of these pocket watches. This is a Dragon Quest pocket watch, Final Fantasy pocket watches. Here's a Squall from Final Fantasy VIII, Noctis from Final Fantasy XV, Cloud from Final Fantasy VII. I won a few more prizes, but let's move on to a different section. So Japan is known for having a crazy amount of Kit Kat flavors. So we're gonna do a very quick taste test. Three different tea flavors. Matcha, deep, strong matcha flavor. Hoji cha, I think it's like a roast green tea. Got a nice color to it. Very good, so it kind of tastes like white chocolate mixed with matcha powder. Probably wouldn't be too hard to make that kind of chocolate at home. This is a surefire gift for any green tea lover. Next is this other matcha flavor, but I call it a rich matcha flavor because it's much greener, darker, and has a stronger matcha flavor to it. The other one's really good. If you like chocolate with flavors added, go with that one. If you want matcha flavor, get this one. Next we've got Hoji Cha. I've never seen this one before so I had to get it. It's got a very very strong smell to it. Definitely smells like tea. Mmm. This is so good. It's got a very earthy flavor. Definitely Hoji Cha. If you like Hoji Cha, 
you should probably like these. Kit Kats. I need to try more Kit Kats. If you're interested in seeing what other flavors there are, let me know. I'll seek some out in the future. Next, as I mentioned before, I'm a big Haichu fan. And the Haichu tournament is in progress. It's already set, so I found some new flavors. These will not be in the tournament. These flavors are very interesting, though. I came across a place in Tokyo Station that sold candy and sweets. All of these Haichu flavors are regional. This Dekopon, which is like a mandarin orange, it's a Kyushu flavor. We've got like apple, lemon, here's another Kyushu, strawberry, cherry, mango, Hokkaido melon, I think that's a uh, Okinawa pineapple. One thing I noticed with these regional flavors, they're so much better than the plain ones. If you try like apple, which is a pretty standard Haichu flavor, and you compare it to this apple flavor, this one's so much better. Right away it's got a stronger smell. It tastes like apple soda, but without the fizz. It doesn't taste like apple flavored candy. Out of all these, my favorite is pineapple. Mm. It doesn't have a syrupy flavor that a lot of the regular Haichu tastes like. This one actually tastes like they took pineapples, squished them, mixed the juice in with the candy, and turned it into this amazing product. Bottom line is, if you see the regional ones, and you'll know because it's got a picture of like a city, get one of those. They'll taste so much better than the regular ones. Now when I was a kid, Pokemon became huge, and Pokemon cards were the best thing ever. So I picked up a few packs for fun. I don't know how rare any of these are. I'm not into Pokemon cards nowadays, but some cool ones. On the first pack I opened, Charizard, and it's a, it's a shiny foil card there. I was so excited to open up and get a Charizard card. For anybody who was a kid in the 90s like me, and Pokemon became huge in like 98, do you remember opening up Pokemon cards and just hoping for Charizard? I remember the first kid at my elementary school that came to school with a Charizard card. Everybody thought he was the best, but man, that just brought back some great memories. I probably won't collect many more of these. Obviously, I still like Pokemon, uh, which leads me into some used goods finds. I like to visit Book Off and Hard Off, all those used goods stores. I know I've mentioned on my Instagram, but I'm not sure if I mentioned on this channel. I'm a big Rurouni Kitchen fan. It's my favorite anime and manga. And every time I go to Japan, I get one new one to signify how many times I've been to Japan. So I'm up to... Da -da -da, Juich, which is 11. So this is volume 11 of Rurouni Kitchen. And Rurouni Kitchen is a really good read, I think. If you notice here, the kanji there has what's called furigana, and that's the reading of the kanji. Shishio here, he's saying, kowarete iru no wa. If it didn't have that furigana, I would have no idea how to pronounce that kanji. I was at a book off or a hard off, and I came across this amazing set of Pokemon, well, Pocket Monsters 2000 Millennium Badges. This set is just so cool. I was big into Pokemon when, you know, red, blue, yellow, and gold and silver were out. But they're like pins. The original retail value was 2,980 yen. And that's about, I don't know, 27, 28 dollars. And I got this for 1,620 yen, which is about 15 dollars. I haven't opened it up yet. I'm not sure what I'm going to do, but this is just so cool. Another used good store find I got was this Mega Man X action figure. Some of these Japanese action figures, they're so just amazingly poseable and they're usually very expensive, 50, 60, 70, 100 dollars. And this huge set right here was less than 30. This comes with this basic Mega Man X. He's got this crazy armor. He comes with a weird version of Rush from the original Mega Man, but kind of like turned into a Rush X almost, which can then be turned into like a speeder bike thing. And actually, when I got home, I opened this up and I put it together, and good grief, I could see why it was only 3,000 yen. Now, the figure is actually amazing. It's heavy, it feels like the, the joints are some sort of metal composite. It's really well made, it's really cool. So if you like Mega Man X, this figure is really well made. It's got a lot of joints, and you can open up the arm here. Both arms do this. Rotate the hand around, 
and give him his buster. Now this figure is awesome and definitely I think this was worth the 3,000 yen. But man, all this like, this add-on armor, which looks so amazing on the on the box, it's a pain in the neck to put on and it doesn't stay. I'm not gonna bother filming it because I wasted too much time trying to get all the pieces on the first time. But you can find so many cool things at these used goods stores. Is anybody a Gundam fan? But I found this Astray. I think it's from Gundam Seed, which I didn't watch. Real grade, which is highly posable, very detailed, but it's one 144th scale. I even got this Gundam Death Scythe Super Deformed. Uh, the Super Deformed models are really nice because they're really affordable. They're like five or six dollars. I got this little critter from the Ghibli Museum. It's the Kitsune Risu Fox Squirrel. It was in Nausicaa, the little critter that you know walks around on main character's shoulder. Now I'll be the first to admit that I get a little carried away when I'm in Japan. So hopefully I can do some more giveaways in the future. If you see something here you like, please stay tuned. But if there was a certain segment of this video that you really liked, you're more interested in learning about the candy or toys or books, please let me know in the comments down below and I can go more in depth on a specific subject matter. Thanks for watching. Pretty soon we'll be having some more travel style videos. So if you like what you see, please subscribe or hit like and uh, stay tuned for some more stuff and I'll see you next time. Fucking hands.